In this video, we're going to take another look at the period, frequency, wavelength, and wave speed. The source of wave motion is a vibrating object. So if you shake the end of a rope up and down, your hand is the vibrating object that's causing the wave on the rope. If you sing a note, your vocal cords are the vibrating object that's causing that sound wave. And if you play a note on a violin, the violin string is the vibrating object that is causing uh, that sound wave. Here we have a string and the little dots here are representing all the particles. You could think of them as molecules that are making up the string. And the wrench over here can be the vibrating object. So we see that if I vibrate this object, I create a wave. Or we can make it more automatic and now we have this rod moving up and down which is the vibrating object that is producing a wave. If the vibrating object has a specific frequency and period, the wave it produces will be a sine wave. And I've included both words frequency and period here because those two quantities are reciprocals of each other. So if you know the frequency um, you can calculate the period. It's just one over the frequency. So the shape will be a sine wave and let's take a look at that. So we can see here that the shape of the wave is actually looking very much like a sine wave and that's occurring because this vibrating object here has a very specific repetitive period. Every time it oscillates it's taking the same amount of time for one cycle. Or if you want to think about frequency, it's making the same number of cycles per second as time goes on. The vibrating object transfers its motion to the particles of the medium. We saw this when we um, jiggled the wrench up and down. That made the particles of the string move. And we also saw it with the rod going up and down. We could see that that was causing the particles of the string to move also. As a result, the particles will have the same frequency of vibration and the same period as the source, as whatever that vibrating object is. For example, a guitar string vibrating at 261.6 cycles per second will make the air particles vibrate at 261.6 cycles per second. And then the vibrating air particles are going to make your eardrum vibrate at that same frequency. And as a result, you will hear the note middle C. Now the period is the time it takes the vibrating particles of the medium, so that's the particles on the string, to complete one full cycle. It's usually easier to measure the period than the frequency. So usually what we're going to do is measure the period and then we will calculate the frequency using this relation that the frequency is the inverse or reciprocal of the period. What we want to do here is determine the frequency of the source, so that is this green particle at the top of the rod. And we also want to figure out the frequency of a particle somewhere in the wave and just compare to confirm that the frequency of the source is the same as the frequency of a particle along the wave. And I do want you to notice, I'm going to slow this down a little bit, I do want you to notice that a particle on the wave, it has only a vertical motion. It's purely moving vertically. I'm going to put a ruler here so you can see. Okay, this green particle here on the wave, do you notice? It's only going straight up and down, purely vertical motion, even though the wave is moving to the right. So that's important. Okay, we want to find the frequency of the rod over here. And this number doesn't mean anything. It doesn't have any units, so we have to actually measure it. So I'm going to put the ruler over here and I want to find the highest point. I think I just passed it. Okay, that was just slightly past the highest point. Okay, and to find the frequency I'm going to measure the period and then I will divide it I will take the reciprocal to find the frequency 
So I'm going to start the timer and then I'm going to step through one complete motion. So this green dot is going to go all the way to its lowest point and then all the way back to its highest point. So here we go. And I started one moment past the highest point. So I think that's right there. The clock says 0.91 seconds. So that tells us that the period of the vibrating source, that green dot on the end of the rod, is 0.91 seconds. To find the frequency, we just need the reciprocal. So that is 1.1 cycles per second. The units of frequency are hertz. So the frequency of the source of vibration is 1.1 hertz. Now let's find the period for some particle along the wave. So I'm going to pick this green dot here. And let's find its highest position. Okay. So make it easy to measure. Okay. So let's start the timer and then let's step through one complete cycle for this green particle that's on the wave and then we will find its frequency. So 0.91 seconds again. So we find the same period for the vibrating object causing the wave and for a vibrating particle that's part of the wave. And then calculating the frequency again, we will get 1.1 hertz, the same result that we got for what was causing the vibration. The wavelength is the distance between two adjacent identical points of the wave. And it's usually easiest to pick two crests and measure the distance between them or two troughs. So let's find the wavelength of our wave. Let's get it going here. And I can see here's a crest and here's a crest. So I'm going to measure the distance between those crests and I get 55 centimeters about. So the wavelength of this wave is 55 centimeters. How far does the wave travel during the time of one period? Well, we can answer that question with our simulation. So we want to know how far the wave travels during one period. Well, we know the period is 0.91 seconds. So what we're going to do is start by considering this crest. And we are going to find out how far that crest moves. So it's not going to be the actual particles because the particles only go up and down. But how far that crest of the wave moves to the right during 0.91 seconds. So I'm going to start the timer, and then let's progress the wave. And let's see in 0.91 seconds where it ends up. OK, 0.91 seconds. So it looks like the crest of the wave went 55 centimeters. Well, interesting, that is the wavelength. So what we notice is that the wave travels a distance of one wavelength in the time of its period. So in one complete cycle, when this thing goes up and down once, the crest will have moved a distance of one wavelength. So we can also say that a wavelength is the distance the wave travels during one cycle or one period, if you want to think of it in terms of the time it took. Now we're ready to look for a relationship. How is the speed of the wave related to its wavelength and period? Well, the basic definition of speed is distance divided by time. If we consider the time interval of one period, then the time we would put here is the period. That's a very specific time. It's the time for one cycle of the wave. But what distance does the wave travel during that time of one period? Well, we just saw in the simulation that the wave travels a distance of one wavelength during the time of one period. So for distance, we can substitute the wavelength of the wave. So this is a useful relationship 
and in symbols we would write it like this. We put a small v for the speed, the letter lambda for the wavelength, and a capital T for the period. But sometimes you have values for frequency instead of period. It could be useful to have um, an equation in terms of frequency instead of period, and they're related, so we can make a substitution to find out how the speed of the wave is related to its wavelength and frequency. So just rewriting it here, showing specifically that lambda over capital T is the same as lambda times 1 over the period. And we remember that 1 over the period is just the frequency. And this is the most common form of this equation. It's usually written in terms of the frequency. And let's just take a look at the units. The speed is going to be in meters per second if your wavelength is in meters. Frequency has units of 1 over seconds, and so you can see that this gives us a unit of speed which matches the left-hand side. What factors affect the speed of a wave? Well, the wavelength and the frequency do not affect the speed of the wave. You can calculate the speed if you know those, or if you know the speed and the wavelength, um, you could calculate the frequency, but they don't cause the speed to be what it is. The speed is determined or caused by properties of the medium. It does not depend on the wavelength and the frequency. For example, the speed of waves on a guitar string is dependent on the tension and the mass per unit length of the string. The speed of sound in air is dependent on the temperature of the air. For a given medium, the speed is constant. This is the speed of the wave, not the speed of the individual particles vibrating up and down. So suppose you have an orchestra and the violins are playing a high frequency note and the trombones are playing a low frequency note. The speed of sound in air in the concert hall is constant. So the sound wave from the violin travels at the same speed as the sound wave from the trombone. With our equation, we have that the speed equals the wavelength times the frequency, but that must be constant. The speed is constant for a certain medium. So if we have two different frequencies, a high frequency note and a low frequency note, how is it possible for the speed to be constant? Well, if the speed is a constant and the frequency is changing, that tells you that the wavelength has to be different. So if the frequency increases, so if f gets larger, then the wavelength of the wave has to get shorter. You can sort of visually see what the wavelength is there, the distance between the crests. Well, now if we increase the frequency, you see now we have a higher frequency, and you can see that the distance between the crests has gotten shorter. So increased frequency makes for a shorter wavelength because the speed, the actual speed of the crests, is the same in both cases.